I had started w by wanting to be involved at the university with in, in politics. Attended a couple of meetings. I realized that the people that we were trying to access and to, to join as an organization, political formation, uh, let me say political formations, they had organized themselves to a clique of only five or six people at a given time. And we had participated largely in academic and spiritual formations because that's the life we understand. That's the life we've been given to. Um, but when people start to undermine you consistently, day in and day out, and not recognize from amongst you your own chosen leaders, you start to see them as an opposition to your progress, and you organize against them. And I urge you never to stop organize in order to make sure that the world around you suits your purposes, your intentions, and your aspirations. I'm saying this because this life, I boko obuse kesin. You don't have a life in storage that is going to come after you've lost this one life that you've been given and then there's another one in storage. After this life, there is no certainty as to what happens beyond the grave. He's given us. It's a gift. We didn't ask of it. He's imbued in us this desire also to live and to exist and to be known by name, by deeds, and by the generations that we live here or that we have joined in this world. Because of this reason, because of this purpose, you cannot afford, even with me, we can all not afford to abdicate the responsibility to lead our own lives. We can't afford to give the life, the God-given life, to someone else. If we do that, I think we would have wasted such a very rich resource that we would have used to impact the generation that is, 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 is on earth and those that are going to come after us. This is why we ended up going to the, the other communities which would not necessarily vote. Academic societies, Abbasas, we went to uh, Christian societies, we went to Muslim student societies, we went to the library people who are always called bookworms, reading, we went to the scientists in uh, building 13 who would not have been mobilized for anything. We went to Mauritian student societies. In society, there are so many other spaces that are not touched by the leading group of the day, wherever we are. And that is a group that any leader should want or should be able to mobilize in order to get to a particular stage. And it so happened that as an independent candidate, supported by all these people, not as an independent, I was not alone, but as this group of the, you know, the overlooked people, we were able to organize ourselves and do a sizable number such that as an ind independent candidate, I actually gained two seats, which would have never happened before, and there was no other independent candidate in the SRC at the university, and there still isn't since, since the exp my experience there, um, because they changed the constitution. Um, the voice, the environment, and organizing one another would be one of the most important things that any leader or in my position I re recognize as the, as, the, as the fuel. Let me 
define what I understand as a leader. Because we talk about leadership in different spaces for different reasons. And really, the purposes and the understandings are, are varied, which is fine. But I want to steal from Achima Fedger's masters in 1963. Achima Fedger became a very um, you know, noti not noticeable and uh, respected scholar afterwards and died, I think, in 2007. Uh, but he studied the context of Engobo, two villages. But I'm not going to get into that. But he advances the thinking that a leader is a superordinate, someone in a senior position, in a, in a higher position, who has to serve as his subordinates. But there is a contract in between that there's an understanding that you are actually serving our purposes, our values, you carry our values, our aspiration, and you become our leader. And then he quickly mentions that there are people who are in a position of leadership who are not worthy to be called leaders. And he uses a new term called despots or despots. And I want us to adopt that. They are leaders that we are not satisfied about. They are not leading us. They are not in a leadership position for our benefit. They have found their own intentions to be and they are busy and are concerned with being in the position than in the role of the position. And they coerce people to do things as they would wish. Let us call those people despots, leaders, superordinates that coerce people in order for them to, to achieve what they want to achieve. Because when we call leaders amongst ourselves, we should have an understanding that we are talking but about a heart that is given to its people, that is given to its subordinates. And this person is elevated from amongst us because we see ourselves in them. We see our future in this person's life. We see our children emulating this person, and we call this person a leader. <laughs>